What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday, everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, I hope you tested negative. And if you did test positive, I'm sorry that you tested positive. I hope you have a full and speedy recovery. And remember, now that you're positive, um, this pretty much sits you out of the Labor Day weekend. If you had any activities this weekend, you're not going to be able to attend them. You need to stay home. Quarantine. Very important that we quarantine when we test positive to limit the spread of this virus as much as possible. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, August 2nd, 2023, Labor Day weekend. We definitely do have some news stories to share with you this weekend. I was able to find some news stories relating a few states that we have not talked about in a while. And we'll talk about a city that we have not talked about in a while as well. And plus some concerning data today out of the UK. So let's get right into it. Yesterday we mentioned the Cincinnati Reds are dealing with a COVID outbreak. There are now three players that are on the COVID-19 injury list for the Reds. This is not good. And this comes as I believe they were about ready to play Chicago. So uh, they're going to be on the injury list until they get better and, of course, test negative. But they also have to be well enough to play. Sadly, non-COVID related. I got to stress non-COVID related because I get a lot of comments on Twitter where people say, oh, you shouldn't be sharing about this person's health. It has nothing to do with COVID. Well, no, I report on celebrity health and celebrity deaths. And this is a sad celebrity death. So uh, a few months ago, back in the spring, uh, Jimmy Buffett was dealing with an illness and was hospitalized. I still don't know what that illness was, but he had to stop touring. He had to stop playing. Unfortunately, this morning we found out Jimmy Buffett has passed away at the age of 76. Hopefully he's up there in Margaritaville, located in Paradise, drinking a margarita and having some cheeseburgers in Paradise. So sadly, Jimmy Buffett has died uh, at the age of 76. It looks like his death occurred uh, Friday in the evening or Friday night, we found out about it this morning. Now moving on to this. This is not a good thing. We know we're in a surge here in the United States. What could go wrong during a surge? Well, we know back to school season is in full swing. And now there's this. It's Labor Day weekend. TSA predicts 14 million Americans will travel over the Labor Day weekend, meaning by air. That's not including all the millions and millions of people that will travel by car, but 14 million Americans are traveling by air so mm, this is not not a good thing and we know this surge it's going to keep going the holiday weekend's going to feel it and we're going to see back to school field but at some point it's going to peak the question is what happens after the peak do we see a big drop do we see a little drop i would bet more towards a little drop and that's simply because there's all these new variants and we have BA 2.86 in a wing still don't know what that's going to do there's a few other new variants that popped up I'll show you that in just a little bit some more data here this is out of uh, Minnesota COVID cases continue to increase in Minnesota this is not good as well according to the Met Council's wastewater numbers there are about three times as many cases in the Twin Cities since the beginning of summer so that's not good i really wish i had some good news to report on today and i don't because now we head over to this in the uk and before we get to this going back to we just showed you uh cbs news cbs news yesterday actually ran a story i saw it last night apparently this was in the national news and again this morning in uh cbs this morning they actually talked about the increase in covid not not only COVID, but they said, you know what? This is starting to get concerning. It's spilling over to the hospitals. You know, the media was saying, well, we're not seeing the hospital increase. No, no, no. They're now mentioning that, hey, you know what? Things are starting to increase in the hospital, and this is relatively concerning. Well, here's more proof of it. In the UK, not only is it increasing in the hospital, deaths are starting to go up in the UK. That's one... Uh, number that we do not want to see rise but here we are they are rising covid symptoms to look out for as deaths skyrocket by 57 percent in a week ons data shows that the number of covid deaths jumped to 74 
in the UK. So um, 57%. So if they, we see it go up another 50% each week, pretty soon we're going to be in the hundreds in the UK. That's a huge step backwards in this pandemic. As we know, BA 2.86 is likely to blame. And the um, EG.5 variant as well. So, yes, this is uh, really bad. 57% increase in the UK. That's not something that we like to see. And then we come over to this. Billie Eilish posting on her Instagram that she is horribly sick. This is from at Meet Jess on Twitter. If you don't follow this account, make sure you do. This is a great account to follow. And she says here, or um, Billie Eilish says, this was the Instagram post, Ireland, I am really, really sick and honestly really suffering. You know me and you know that I wouldn't cancel even if I was like literally dying. This doesn't feel, this does feel pretty close though. Lola, the show must go on. I will see you tonight, but please keep me in mind that I'm trying my best and I'm going to need your help tonight. Go hard for me. Yet again, another celebrity who's sick, but won't take a rest while they're sick. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Indiana sees substantial spike in COVID hospitalizations, the CDC says. And yes, um, Indiana is not immune to COVID. And it sounds here like Indiana saw COVID-19 hospitalizations jump by 32% in the last week of August. According to the map during the, that time, a total of 195 people were admitted to local hospitals with confirmed COVID-19 cases. So um, this is not good. Indiana, another state that's rising for COVID at this time. Speaking of the BA 2.86 variant, which we just mentioned a little bit ago, Texas now reports its first case. Michigan has had a case. Ohio has had a case. New York. And it is also in Virginia now. How many cases are we talking about? Well, around the world, there are now 39 cases. Denmark, 12. U.S., 5. Sweden, 5. United Kingdom, 4. South Africa, 3. Portugal, two, and the following countries have one. Canada, France, Germany, Israel, Norway, Spain, Switzerland, Thailand. So we are watching the BA 2.86 very increase at this time, and it is increasing in a concerning amount here. All right, taking a look at hospital admissions. Well, on the most recent update, there were 15,067 hospital admissions. We also do want to take a look at the latest uh, variants here. I do have that up here. Here we go, the latest uh, COVID variant update. And I'm going to move myself to the left here so you can see this a little bit better. EG.5 is now at 21.5%. FL1.5.1 is at 14.5%. That XVB116.6 is at 9.2%. And it's um, relative, XBB 1.16 is at 8.9%. Remember, earlier in the summer, we thought that would be concerning, and every time we think something's going to be concerning, something new pops up, and, you know, right now, where everyone's got their eyes on BA 2.86, but follow with me here. There's the BA, or excuse me, XBB 2.3 at 8.1%, but then, hello, hi, HV 1.1, Yes, this is a new one. It just literally popped up. It's now at 5.1%. Then there's the XBB 1.16.1 at 5%. And, you know, it goes on and on. There's a lot of different variants here. I think it's close to about 25 now. Another one which is new, which I've never seen before, is the GE.1, which is now at 1.6%. All right, taking a look at heat-related illness across the United States, and you can see here it is uh, most prevalent in the south. We'll probably see this shift a bit north into the east because it's going to get stinking hot in the northeast. Central states are dealing with it, and some of the Pacific Northwest states as well. Taking a look at the latest air qualities, and you'll see here on the air quality map, there are a couple concerning areas not too many at this time. Uh, some of the central region has some yellow, some orange popping up, and actually a bit of an improvement on the west coast. Pacific Northwest, it's still bad, but not as bad as it was. Northeast is doing pretty good, and the southeast is doing pretty good. If you want to learn more about climate and weather, I do have another channel for that. Haven't posted an update there in a few days. We'll eventually at some point this week and get something out on that channel. Walgreens this week. We know Walgreens is at 43.6% positivity. It dropped ever so slightly, but 
Their testing is up, and Walgreens himself is reporting that they are seeing a greater demand in testing, and they advised there could be, you know, a lack of testing, possibly. I don't know whether they're referring to those at-home tests. I'm assuming they mean they're running out of at-home tests, but maybe uh, they don't have as many time slots or as many PCR tests available as they used to either. Moving on, taking a look at BioBot this week, we do know that wastewater is rising in most regions of the U.S. There's a slight drop in the southeast. We're not buying that. Remember last week we saw the drop in the uh, Midwest, and look what happened. It started going up again. I think we could see the southeast continue. Well, there's been reported outbreaks going on in Florida as of lately, so we know the southeast has not uh, peaked yet. Speaking of wastewater, we will have our regular wastewater update tomorrow where we will go over all these numbers here and including these numbers right here which are not good there's now 104 sites in the red 295 sites in the orange so we'll take a deep dive into this tomorrow uh, now let's take a look at a few of those wastewater sites that show other things not just covid and what do you say we come down here to virginia what is going on in virginia well, let's take a look at Little Falls Run. And the overall trajectory here is upward with COVID. It has gone down on the most recent update. Influenza not detected yet. RSV not detected yet. HMPV not an issue. Mpox and norovirus is dropping at this time. We also do want to come down to the south. And specifically, we do want to take a look at Georgia. Let's come down to Columbus, Georgia. Now, COVID is rising. Influenza not detected here yet, and I find that interesting. More on that in a bit why that may be interesting. RSV is starting to rise. We would expect that now. HMPV not detected, Mpox not an issue, and norovirus is increasing. One of the reasons why we are concerned with what's going on down in uh, Georgia, because check this out, and we can move myself back to the right, I guess. Uh, check this out. Georgia now reports moderate levels of influenza. The South is starting to rise now, as is Texas, as is New Mexico, as is California. Uh, New York City is not in minimal now. They're back to the low. So things are starting to rise in the South. Flu is on the rise. That's eventually going to spread its way to the north. Starts in the South and will spread its way northward. All right, taking a look now. Let's take a look at New Jersey. Um, let's refresh this to make sure it's the most up-to-date data. I'm expecting there's a lot of hospitals that probably won't report in New Jersey, but maybe I'll be surprised. Okay, 68 out of 70. That's not bad. 351 hospitalizations, 13 people on a ventilator, 42 people in the ICU. Philadelphia yesterday, just 710 EMS incidents. That's lower. That's good to see. That's uh, pretty. F that's far enough away from 800 to keep me happy. But here's what's going on in the Philadelphia suburbs right now. You can see we do have quite a few calls ongoing in Montgomery County. What's going on in uh, Chester County? Wow, look at this. Respiratory difficulty, respiratory difficulty, unconscious person, a whole bunch of different things. I think EMS, ST, I think that stands for EMS standby. Not 100% certain. That's why I always assumed it was. Uh, now let's come over to this. Uh, Los Angeles is what we want to take a look at. And in Los Angeles, here you go. Here's the positivity rate. You can see it's clearly rising. But the big one that we want to take a look at here is this. Take a look at hospitalizations. And you can see you might have to turn your head a little bit. Back at the beginning of summer, after 4th of July, they started going up. Then in August, they started going up faster. You can see it's starting to go vertical now. So Los Angeles, uh, daily number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients confirmed patients the past seven day average and you can see that number is continuously going up it's approaching if not over the 500 level now so yes los angeles your hospitalizations are starting to go up um unfortunately that means your cases are also going up as well and now let's uh, take a look at california in general we might as well let's see do we have it here yes we do let's see what's going on in california the positivity rate in california is now at 14 percent and if you look at this chart here it's starting to go up a little bit faster that's not good deaths they did drop and now they're starting to go up again hospital admissions in california they are rising as well Let's take a look here at New York State. I don't think we have an update today because it's the weekend. We don't, but here's yesterday's number. 2,794 new cases. 
and a reminder this does now include reinfections what we do not see anymore is the positivity rate you can see here that's not there anymore that's okay they have included reinfections i'm happy about that maybe they watch my videos maybe they've seen what i've said on twitter i don't know but it's finally about time that they did that so 2794 new cases including reinfections in one day that's that's a high number let's take a look at new york state hospitalizations let's see what's going on there and the most recent update they did drop ever so slightly here's what the latest number is there are 100 or 1111 people in hospital 103 people in the icu the icu number did not rise so that my friends is good to see and quickly let's end today on a little bit of an international update and taking a look here south korea cases down 69 percent deaths down 66 percent australia cases now are going up again and that's interesting because they are about to enter spring so that's not good to see their cases rising I don't know if they're having a BA 2.85 just yet. Let's go back to that. Uh, did we see Australia listed there? No, Australia is not listed on that. So uh, no BA 2.86, I should say, is not listed there yet. Romania cases now up 15%. Belgium cases are up 44%. New Zealand cases down 59%. But I'm not so certain I agree with that because we saw that news story the other day which said there were over 3,000 some cases and yet this only has 1,400, almost 1,500. So I think that is wrong. Israel cases up 32%. That's likely to probably keep rising. I'm hearing some bad things about Israel. 100% uh, increase in deaths there. 10 versus 5. Mako, 11% increase in cases. Hong Kong cases are now up 40%. Switzerland cases up 7%. No deaths reported there. Or maybe they just have not reported their deaths. Poland cases are now up 39%. Bulgaria cases are up 15%. Afghanistan cases up 47%. And um, they do have uh, two deaths versus one. That's why that says 100%. Morocco cases are now up 118%. Bangladesh cases are now up 55%. Pakistan cases are now up 153%. And yep, that does it for today. Alrighty, guys, we'll probably try and do another pandemic update tomorrow afternoon on top of the wastewater update. Stay tuned. I'll let you know on Twitter whether that's actually going to happen or not. We'll have to see how much uh, news and data happens. You know what? between now and tomorrow afternoon, that's a full 24 hours. So I know it's a holiday weekend. Things could pop up. You just never know. If you enjoy this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone that needs to see this information, maybe they were uh, contemplating, ah, should I go to a barbecue? Should I not? Send them this way. Let them see my videos first, and maybe they'll think twice about going to that big gathering that's planned for Labor Day weekend. And if you must go to one, there's no shame in putting a mask on. None whatsoever. It's called being safe. A mask is not a restriction on your freedom. A mask is not a uh, restriction on your liberty. A mask is simply a safety precaution because we are in a pandemic where cases, hospitalizations, and as you saw in some places, deaths are now rising. People are dying from this. Uh, don't you want to protect yourself from a virus where people are dying? Put on a mask, okay? Alrighty, that does it for today, guys. I'll see you again tomorrow for the wastewater update. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Have a great Saturday afternoon.